It's Sarah Kaltwasser. I'm the artist in residence and art program supervisor with Keswick Swenson Wells Center for Healthy Living in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, I'm going to do an art project with you in my home studio. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a landscape painting using tissue paper. The supplies you're going to need include you're going to need a colored pencil or something to write with. I'm choosing a lighter color for what I'm doing today. You're going to need a canvas or canvas board. I have a canvas board here. They're relatively thin and have the nice texture of canvas. You're going to need a stiff bristle brush. You can use a round or a flat. In this case, I'm using a round brush. For my detail work, I'm going to use a softer synthetic flat brush. This is going to help me get some of the finer details in. You're going to need an assortment of tissue paper. It can be any color arrangement that you like. I have a variety pack here, almost every color of the rainbow. You're going to need some Maj Podge. You can use a matte or a glossy finish. In this case, I'm using matte. You're going to need a black paint pen. You can use any brand that you like. Sharpie paint pens work well, but I'm going to use Posca in this case. Okay, now that we've got all of our supplies, we can get started. We're gonna begin by drawing out the basic draft of what we wanna make for our landscape. So I'm using this light colored pencil specifically because it's not gonna show through the tissue paper and I'm drawing very lightly. This may be a little bit difficult for you to see on camera, but it's just an outline of, of basic ideas of where we want things to be. I've decided to do a sort of desert landscape image today. I'm working from my imagination, so this isn't going to be particularly realistic, but it's still helpful to draw out your ideas instead of totally winging it with the tissue paper. You may be able to just make out that I have a ground plane, I have some plateaus in the background, I'm drawing in my sun right now, and I've made some lines of where I want some larger kind of cloud shapes to be back behind the sun. So once you get that drawn out, you can start working with the Maj Podge. I'm just pouring a little bit of the matte Maj Podge into a small container, and then I'm gonna take um, my tissue paper, the color that I wanna work with, and I'm going to start applying that. I'm going to begin by putting down a layer of the matte Maj Podge, and I'm just thoroughly coating it on that ground plane, which is where I'm going to start. And I'm taking smaller pieces of this yellow tissue paper and I'm just beginning to delicately apply it with my brush. I'm uh, doing an undercoat on the canvas and then overcoating it with the matte Maj Podge over the tissue paper. Not so hard that it rips, but firm enough where it's getting good coverage. I'm going to start speeding it up here so you can see how I'm layering all the smaller pieces of tissue paper. Now I've put this kind of ochre light yellow on the ground plane and you can see that as we add the tissue paper, it's starting to layer. Now I'm working into the sky with a sort of a cerulean blue tissue paper. And again, I'm just layering that. The pieces of paper that I'm using are about the size of a quarter or smaller. So think about that when you're working. Um, how big do you want to apply? Because if you have a lot of excess, then it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of waste. So I'm beginning to work into these cloud shapes with a subtly lighter blue tissue paper. It's very, very subtle. The transition is almost not apparent when you're seeing it being applied on the video. But uh, once we get a little bit more coverage, it'll be a little bit more evident. And to bring out the lightness of it, I'm also going to begin to start to apply some white tissue paper here in a minute to really bring out that cloud shape that has blue sky that you can see through it. I mean, that's what's beautiful about the, the tissue paper process or making a landscape using tissue paper is the translucency of the of the material so you really get beautiful layering effects you can really build the material over time to get the level of opacity or translucency that you prefer now i'm going to start working into the plateaus with a salmony sort of orange color and i'm just building out those shapes tearing pieces of tissue paper that fit within it but not being too precise if you like to be precise you can cut the tissue paper into the exact shapes that you want using scissors but that's not the aesthetic that I'm going for today, but it's certainly something that you could try if you want to do this process on your own. And I'm layering some lighter pink down towards the ground plane just to get that transition of color in the plateau. 
And we're going to start working in with multiple layers here now that we've got the base layer for most of the piece across the composition. You may have noticed at this point that I've switched from the round bristle brush that was a little bit thicker to a flat brush, the synthetic brush that I showed at the beginning of the video. I've done this for a couple reasons. The bristle brush gets a lot of great coverage, but it also holds a lot more Maj Podge. So if you're trying to control the amount of Maj Podge that you apply over the tissue paper or on the canvas, um, then you want to use something that doesn't hold quite as heavy a load of Maj Podge. Uh, so the flat brush allows us to do that. The flat brush also allows me to, to be kind of specific about where I direct the amount of material. Um, and the bristle brush, because it's a little bit stiffer, uh, you lose a little bit of control. Um, so now you might be noticing that I'm starting to make some more specific aesthetic decisions in the application of my tissue paper. I've added some pink in the sky to create these subtle little pink chemtrails. I'm starting to work more specifically into the landscape, adding some greenery so we can have some foliage in our desert. It's a, it's a desert, but it's still got a little bit of greenery there, even in the distance. So now that we've layered most of the base colors, I'm going in with some darks. The magenta kind of fuchsia -y color of that sun is really powerful, so we want to balance that out throughout the composition. So I've put in some darker blues in the sky that are really going to help it pop when we draw over with the black ink. And I'm also adding some uh, deep purple to the base. So I've let this dry for an hour in front of a box fan. Uh, we make things work as we need to. And now I'm going to start working in with my Posca paint pen. Now I'm doing some line work around. Uh, if you're trying not to make something look particularly cartoony or a little bit more realistic, then you may not want to apply a black pen, but you may want to work in with other different color pens. Now as I work in here, I'm just going to start speeding up the video so you can see my process. And I'm going to start doing a combination of line work around the objects that I've put in, like my plants. And I'm going to also add a little bit of cross-hatching in certain areas as to start building up the forms in this composition. So I'm working in the ground plane there. And I've turned it around so I don't get any smearing, and now I'm working into my plateaus. And here's where I'm going to apply some of that cross-hatching. And that's going to help the, the image look a little bit more exciting and build some form into, into the things that we've applied onto the composition. Now I'm working into my sun. And since this isn't realistic, I'm having a little bit of fun with it, um, really going pretty um, abstract in some ways with my line work. All right, I think we're pretty much done. There we go. Ta-da! We did it. It turned out pretty cool. It's a great way to do a landscape if you, if you don't consider yourself a painter. I hope that you enjoyed this process and that you have a wonderful day. Bye!